If you don't care about how it works at all and you just want to slap cell shading on your post-process volume, uh, here is the cell shading material with the shadow parameter and highlight parameter that you can edit in your material instance. So I've been playing a lot of Zelda Breath of the Wild recently and I really like the cell shaded art style in that game and I wanted to try to recreate it in Unreal Engine. And I couldn't find any good videos that are up to date on how to do cell shading in Unreal Engine, so I found a, I found a written tutorial online and basically followed that and this is how to do cell shading in the current version of Unreal Engine, which is 4.21 as of this video. So we're going to start by just creating a new material, call this cell shading mat, um, open this up. And you want to set the material domain to post process because we're going to add this to, wow, I didn't spell that right at all. We're going to add this to a post process volume and that's how we're going to actually apply the cell shading. So you can see since it's a post process material, the only thing we have is emissive color. And we're going to want to get two scene texture nodes. And one of them you're going to want to have as diffuse color, and then just copy and paste that. The other one you're going to want to have as post process input zero. So diffuse color, just as it sounds, just gets the diffuse color for everything in the scene. And then the post process input zero is after Unreal applies all the post processing processing effects like shadows and stuff. It'll store that in your post post process input. So out of both of these, you're going to want to get a desaturation node, just copy and paste that. And that'll convert both of these to a grayscale image. And then you're going to want to divide, divide those together. And then clamp, which will, and you can see the default is already zero and one. So that'll take the black to white image and clamp black to a value of zero and white to a value of one. Um, and then out of this, you're gonna make an if node. And then, so that goes into the A value and the B value, you want a constant, which you can convert to a parameter if you want to have control over it after the fact. Um, like in an instance, and we're going to call this shadow depth. Why I cannot type today? Shadow depth. There we go. And you want to have this set to 0 0.5 by default. Um, and then you're going to want another scene texture node. This one. It's also going to be diffuse color and out of this. So this is basically saying if, so you have A, which is your post process and diffuse color. So that's going into A, B is going into shadow depth. So if you're, so you're saying if you're, if this grayscale, if the pixel in the grayscale image is greater than this value, so 0 0.5, because it's clamped to 0 and 1, would be exactly middle gray. If it's greater than middle gray, you just want it to be the diffuse color. And if it's below middle gray, I'm going to take this, multiply, multiply it by 0 0.5, and put that into A is less than B. And what this is saying is, if it's if the pixel is below 0 0.5 brightness, so below middle gray. You're going to take the diffuse color and multiply it by 0 0.5, which will be half the brightness of the diffuse color, so it will be a shadow. And you could just take this and plug it into your emissive color, and you would have that's that's your shell that's your cell shading. Um, the problem with this is it'll apply it to everything and. Some materials just don't look that good with cell shading. And also a lot of the time um, in games, only the only specific things will be cell shaded, like characters and items and stuff. And then like the landscape won't be cell shaded. 
So if you want to have control over what is cell shaded, you need to create a custom depth filter. So you're going to get three more scene texture nodes. Um, one of these is going to be scene depth. This one is going to be custom depth. Where's custom depth at? Custom depth. And this one is going to be post process input zero. And this one, you're going to mask, component mask, just red, copy, paste, same thing. And then this, break the link to this because you want to go through the filter before you put it into the emissive color. And then you're going to have another if node. That's actually wrong. Break link. So this goes into the A value. Sorry, that's wrong. This goes into the A is greater than B value. This goes into the A value. This goes in to the B value. And this goes into the A is less than B value. That part I don't entirely understand, but what I know is that it makes it so it only applies it to the things that have custom depth pass uh, turned on in their render settings. And you want to apply that whole thing to emissive color. And the last thing before we actually apply this to the world is you want to go down to post process material and you want to apply it. You want to set your blendable location to before tone mapping. If you don't do that, it'll try to apply this after it does all the special effects and stuff. And again, I'm not, I don't entirely understand it, but basically if you don't do that, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look like cell shading. So now you have your cell shading material, you have your shadow depth. And so you want to create a material instance it uses less resources and you have control over this shadow depth. And we're going to create a new go to volumes. Here we go. Drag that into your scene. Um, and post-process materials, choose asset reference, click on your instance, and then just use selected asset from the browser. And I notice it didn't do anything because, well, first off, you need to set it to unbound so it applies to the entire scene. And then, so you go to your object, you want to scroll down to rendering and you want to render custom depth pass and now you can see this material looks cell shaded you've got the shadow so exactly half brightness on the object it switches from your light color to your dark color which is the light color divided by or multiplied by 0 0.5 you'll notice there are no highlights so we can actually make this look a little bit better if we go into our cell shading material and all right so you want to comment this off this is your cell shading this is your custom depth and in addition to all this if you want to do highlights you take this go into an add node you want this going into the B and then out of here, you're going to create another if node. Nope, don't want that. It's going into the B. This goes into A is greater than B. All right, so basically, you're just going to take all of this, copy, paste, but this time, this is not shadow depth, this is your highlight. And a mistake I made when I was first making this is I left this clamp in here. And basically what that, it makes it so the highlight can't be, there's a limit to how small your highlight can be. Which if you've seen cell shaded things before, and just get rid of that clamp. 
um, the highlights, like in Breath of the Wild, the highlights are only at the very edges of models. Um, oh wait, okay. So you take this if node, put it in the add, and then you've got your highlights. So you hit save, that'll apply it to the world. All right, so now if you go into your instance, enable highlights, and make this smaller just so we can see what's going on here. And as you change this value, you can see the highlights getting smaller on your object. And if you change this value, you control how deep the shadows are. And now you've got three tone cell shading. So if you go to these other objects, enable custom depth, um, this you'll have to go into the actual mannequin and then enable custom depth on that material. So I'm not going to do that right now. Um, one thing you'll notice is that this bench, the handles are just pure black. I'm not sure why, but metallic materials don't work with this cell shading method. Um, yeah, but obviously stuff that's not metallic, it works pretty dang well. And yeah, that's about it. That is how to do cell shading in Unreal Engine 4.21. Thanks for watching and hope you have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.